What's up, guys? Welcome back to a, another day. It's not really day. It's like two in the morning for me right now. But I wanted to film this. I, there's something that I'm using right now that I've been working on, and it's kind of like a testing for me. And I wanted to do this video because uh, somebody left a comment. Um, you know, what? hold on. All right. So sorry about that. So uh, yeah, somebody left a comment. And uh, er Edward Jeremy said, show us your starting vlogger pack. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the things that I've been using, why I've been using it, and kind of the progression of things. Something I just got. And I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of cool false cuts in the midst of all of it. So let's just uh, get started. Ha ha ha. That was pretty stupid. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. Come here, yeah, you guys are Let's just go. All right. So, oh, oh, that looks pretty cool. There we go. So let's talk about what you can use if you want to start vlogging. And I think the easiest thing, if you want to get into vlogging cheap and easy, and if you have one of these ready, it's the best way to go. And it's this right there. This is a phone. <laughs> Believe it or not, a lot of these phones nowadays, the cameras are really, really good. The audio is pretty good, and it's a simple, easy way to have a camera on you to start recording right away. So if you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of budget, I think your phone is a great option to just start filming right away. You don't need much, but even with your phone, you can start to expand on it and make it something a little bit better if that's something you want to do. This is a f mobile phone holder, that's it. Uh, it comes with a little screw hole at the bottom. And with this, you can screw it onto something. So if you have like a little tripod or, or a, a handle, originally when I first started all this, I just had a handle and I pretty much just did this. And then I put my phone on here thusly. And that was my setup, that was it. And that's all you need right there. It's a quick little thing. If you want to put it down, you could put it down if you want. You can get little ball head mounts for it. Some of them come with ball heads, but I think this is a cool way to start. And actually this little tripod I still use in something that I'll show you later for one of my other setups. Right there, bang, real quick and easy. And that's something you can get little tripods like this for like 10 bucks on Amazon. All the links for everything will be in, des in the description. So if you like something, you want to check it out, it'll be down there for you to get. So the next thing I got was one of these. This is a Manfrotto Pixie. And basically I would just screw the phone mount to this like that. And then I would put my phone in. Now the cool thing about this one is that not only does it stand, but it has a little button. And if you push this button, it allows you to change the angle. Ooh. Ooh. So this is a cool little thing to have if you want to vlog and or take pictures, you can put a little camera on here. And this is a viable option. So if you're trying to get into it, you can. And they actually sell different kinds of phone mounts, by the way. They have phone mounts that can allow you to attach lights or microphones, all kinds of stuff. So this is something kind of cool to keep in mind when you're thinking about a vlog setup. But uh, now I'm gonna pull away from the mobile setup and I'm gonna show you how I was actually using more of this stuff. So this is my vlog camera. This is the G7X Mark III. Uh, and I started with the Mark II and it's a great camera. I enjoy it, it shoots 4K, it shoots slow-mo. So it kind of took over for a lot of things that I used to have to do. But with this, it's the same thing. You just screw this right onto the Pixie and you are good to go. You just do this, you turn on the camera, turn it towards yourself, and there you go. You can vlog real fast with that. And this is this is an awesome little thing. This is a great camera. It's a little pricier. This is definitely something that, you know, if you wanna step up a little bit from your phone, this is a cool option. One problem that I had with this camera was that, or actually the old one that the new one solved, was that it didn't have a, a mic input. And this one does. If you want, you can actually click, I think right up here, and you'll go to a video where I teach you how to make this which is a, a, a DIY mic that I had that I made for this camera. So now I just do this, I do this, and I have a nice little vlog set up with good audio, and it's small, and it gets out of the way, because I live in New York City, and in New York City, 
if you start trying to pull out big cameras, sometimes they, they get scared and they're like, oh, you can't, film, you, can't, you can't do the filming here. So this became my main vlog setup. Uh, and I've always wanted to shoot with my better cameras, but sometimes it's more of a hassle than it's worth. So I, I kind of stick to this when I'm vlogging. You know, if you're gonna use a little camera like this, basically anything I'm gonna show you will work with this kind of camera. So just keep that in mind. So this is one that I found. I don't remember the name of this, but I'll, I'll put the link in the description below. And I like this, and I actually still use this a lot because it's all aluminum. It's not too heavy. It's got a ball head. It's got an like leg extensions like this, so you can extend it out. So you can extend it here. And it has a lock, so you can stand it like a mini tripod. So when it's like this, I can still adjust whatever I'm doing which I think is super cool. So this is like 20 bucks, it's not too expensive. And this will hold a full DSLR. After a while, I started vlogging with a camera like this. This isn't the one I was vlogging with, this is a GH4, but I was vlogging with a Canon. I usually go with two options and it really depends on where I'm going. If I'm gonna be traveling somewhere, I'll usually bring this right here. This is the Rode Video Micro and it's super small. And this comes out, and all you need is this cable right here, attach it to your camera, the input, and you're good to go. It's nice and small, doesn't get in the way. In fact, I'll put it on the camera to show you. And you can still shoot photos or whatever you wanna do, it doesn't get in the way at all. If, I, if I'm in a little bit more controlled situation or if I kinda of plan ahead a little bit, I will use this. And this is the Rode Video Pro Plus, I think it's called. This has an internal battery that recharges. It charges with USB. But the cool thing about this is that it has auto on and auto off. So the older versions of this mic, you had to make sure to turn it on. But this one, once the camera turns on, this mic will turn on. So you'll never ever not have your audio, which I think is amazing. And one of the reasons why I use this and this because you don't have to turn anything on, it just does it automatically. Of course, this one is powered, so you can lose power, but this one has a lot more control. This one is just kind of what it is. It does come with this wind muff, uh, which is pretty substantial for a $60 mic. This is almost $350. This one was like $60, so. These are the mics that I use most often. In fact, in front of my camera right now, I have one of these. I wanted to try different ways to hold a camera. So like for a while, everybody was using one of these. I hate these so much. I think they are garbage. And I see a lot of people using them because they can wrap around things. But man, when these things start to wear out, they start popping out or they won't hold or they're loose. I just don't like it at all. Um, which is why I just kind of stayed away from them and I started looking for other things. And the one I used for a long time, for my DSLR before I was using this was this. This is the bigger version of the Manfrotto Pixie and it has extendable legs. It has a leg lock so you can extend the legs all the way out and go flat or you can bring it up higher and lock the legs and it'll go about that high and each leg also extends out. So you have adjustment with that and it has a locking ball mount. And man, did I love this thing. This thing was great for me. It was nice, it was light, it was compact. And it did me good for about a year until, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a crack in here right now. And if it wasn't for that, I would still be using it. But because there's a crack, I'm kind of scared to put my expensive camera on there, which I'm sure you can understand. But this is, this one is maybe double the price of this. So if this one is 15, this one might be 30. But it is a good mount. I just wish it didn't crack. It lasts me a good year for $30. I think that's a pretty good price, you know, to go for a year. So that was another mount that I used. And then I started looking into smaller things, kind of like this, and I bought this one too. The thing I didn't like about this was that there was no way to lock the legs, right? So everything is friction based. So you would put it there. If you want it higher, you would kind of have to set it in the position and then leave it there. And then you can adjust the, it has like a, like a swivel here it has a, a lock for the swivel. And then it has a lock for this and it comes with a quick release, kind of like this one. This one comes with a quick release also, which is cool. What I didn't like about it was the leg thing. Like I didn't like that. I can't 
like lock the legs. So I've kind of just had it there. I don't know if I'll ever use this. I might give it to a friend. But I did get something new in, and I'm actually super excited to try it. So this is called the Switch Pod. Now, I first found out about the Switch Pod through uh, Peter McKinnon. I saw a video on it, and I went out and I bought it. <laughs> and I literally got it in today. This is it. It's a solid thing. The legs open and lock. And then I, I attached a ball head to it with the quick release that I use. This is a quick release I use for everything. But I think one of the important things with this is when you get something new, you gotta do like the sniff test, yeah. Oh, that, that is, that is fresh. So with this, you know, I have the quick release on the bottom of this camera. I'm just kind of pop that on there, bang. And then you tighten down your ball head. And the whole point is you can vlog with it and then when you're ready, you can set this down and it's ready to go. And because of the, I added the ball mount, I can then adjust it from there. Uh, I think I do think I need to get a better ball mount though. This looks kind of flimsy for, for this, but I think it'll be all right for now. And it also has uh, holes. It has these two mounting holes here. So if you have something that uses the same screw as the tripod, you can actually screw that in. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm screwing in a tripod. So now, <laughs> now I have a, <laughs> It's like a tripod with training wheels. This is film life right here, man. The ultimate tripod. But yeah, but this is some of the stuff that I'm using now and some of the stuff that I've used in the past and how I use them and so on and so forth. Now, actually what I wanna do is show you some of the things that I've kind of switched to, uh, even though I still use this. This is still my go-to camera. All right, but before I do that, uh, I wanna show you guys a few uh, card things. Now. Since we're at a table, I might as well show you some false cuts that you can do. So this first false cut is a triple false cut. It's one that's uh, used quite a bit and you can expand upon it a little bit like that. But either way, the top card will stay on top of the deck. So let's, let's uh, show you how it looks face up. Okay. And if you want to extend it a little bit, once you get to the last packet, you can cut it some more. But basically all that's happening is you're going to do a swing cut. So you lift up with the index finger, kick off a packet. You're going to do another swing cut. But as you do the swing cut, you're going to hold a break with your pinky. Okay, so I have a break in between. And then you can either add this or drop it down. I don't. I just go straight down. So cut, cut, and I drop. Just grab here, drop, and then you drop right there. And if you want, when you get to that last packet, so cut, hold a break, drop, drop. When you get to here, you can do it again. So you can cut a small packet, cut a small packet, drop, drop, drop. Or when you get to that last packet, you can just swing cut, drop, and then drop. And it's okay if it gets a little messy. It actually looks a little bit nicer if it's a little bit messy. So don't be scared to, to let the cards just kind of fly around a little bit like that. So the second cut is uh, a little simpler, a lot simpler, and it looks like this. Okay, This is another old, old cut. And all you're gonna do is a swing cut. So we'll show you the top card. You do a swing cut. Now with this pack, you're gonna leave it here and you're just gonna tap. Once you finish tapping, you drop the bottom packet again and you put that back on top. This is what it looks like. You really don't do anything, which is the whole point of a false cut, am I right? The third false cut, super old. Somebody taught this to me a long time ago, but basically it's this. And the whole way this cut works is I'm literally stripping out the bottom of the packet and putting it down. That's the cut. but. If you add your finger to the top while you're doing this, it helps create the illusion that you're dragging that top packet down, even though you're not. Kind of swivel it out a little bit, bring your other hand to the bottom, index finger lightly touches the top card, you strip out the bottom as your finger drags, you go straight down to the table, and you put the top packet back on top of the deck, and I'll show you that face up. That's it. So that's an, three false cuts for you to play with. And in the next video, I will add something. I, I have some things I, I, I wanna talk about with 
some of these false cuts and I have some in the hands false cuts. And actually I did a video with my friend Alex Rangel. So go back to this corner. There'll be another video with some false cuts that he came up with. They're a little more advanced, <laughs> but let's get back to the fun stuff. So what do I carry every single day with me when I leave my house other than like cards and stuff? Well, I carry this camera and this stand all the time. This is always in my bag. So that's, that's a given. But I have some other things that I carry too now. And one of them is this. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket. And I actually have a little lens on here. It's a wide angle lens. But this is a pocket gimbal. Look at that, look how cool that is, man. This is something I always have in my bag. And the reason why I always have this in my bag is because one, if I ever wanna take that cool kind of smooth tracking shot, I literally hook this up to my phone I can control everything with my phone with it, and it's beautiful. It takes really good footage. I don't use it so much when I have to use audio. I did try vlogging with it once, but I just wasn't comfortable. I actually liked the bigger cameras, but you could vlog with it. So this is always in my bag. The other thing I always have in my bag is this right here. And if you don't know what this is, this is a 360 camera. These things are so much fun. If you ever go check out my Instagram, you'll see some weird, funky photos. Uh, I took one with Darren Brown recently. Uh, it was taken with this. I usually carry the stick, the selfie stick, and this. That's it. This is my everyday carry right here. Super small, super compact, and I don't know, just a lot of fun. Things like this allow you to play with your creativity and play with some visual things. You don't have to necessarily walk around with a big camera. Like, and actually this is a small one compared, but like, you know, different lenses and lights and extra batteries and everything. This all right here, all of this stuff can be USB powered and charged in a car, you know, and it takes up no space. Even the mic for this is super tiny. And, and like I said, if you want to check out the video that I did for this, it's, it's in the description. All right. So that's about it. That, uh, I, you know, all the links for everything will be in the description below. So if you want to check that out. You can, a lot of them are Amazon links, so just, you know, it is an affiliate link, so I do get a little kickback for anything that you purchase. It costs you nothing. It's all done in the background. You don't pay any more for it, but it does help me out. Also, if you wanna help support me too, I do have a website, Lost Art Magic, where I sell magic tricks and things like that. And I'm actually gonna be filming something that I released before, but I'm gonna be re-releasing it with some new touches and new handlings. So that's gonna be coming out too play with the cuts and uh, you know what I'm gonna read some random comments from other videos so uh, let's see here Shane H says you're not terrible at your games except quip clash you're terrible at that I'm the seven time champ so suck it you know what Eric Kabbalah says does the king of spades smell like you though funking Xavier Harvey Wallace, she has the hat of the Overwatch Esports team, New York Excelsior. Absolutely correct. You are on the money. Paul Brashier? Mm. What a deluxe action palm. The hidden card technique I have never come across, but works susceptibly beautifully from the front. With appropriate presentation, that becomes invisible. Good shout out, X. And good creation, D. And then he does the thingy. Oh, I can't even do that symbol anymore. It's a stupid white symbol. It's so stupid. Your tutorial doesn't work. I got my foot stuck in our ceiling fan. <laughs> uh, Juan R says, seems way angle sensitivity. Let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, this is something I'm gonna start doing from now on, uh, just picking random comments and reading them on, the, on at the end of the video. So please leave your comments below. I'll pick some out in the next video. We'll have some fun with it. Uh, try not to get too crazy. Try, <laughs> try to keep it with what the video is, if you like the cuts, if you like the things that I'm showing you. And uh, that's about it. Thanks a lot, guys. Don't forget uh, nothing. Just don't forget anything. Everything is in the description below. I don't even know why I'm talking anymore. Peace out, guys.